Hello, I'm Susan Moore and welcome to my Writer's Shed, where today we're going to continue with the adventures of Nat and Fizz in Emerald Secret, the second book in my Nat Walker trilogy. And today we are going to start with chapter 40, Throne, as we near the end of Nat's adventure. We left her and Fizz and Zixin on board the Junko sailboat headed to Cornwall to, in the search for the Moye sword and hot on their heels is the terrible Ivy Shiversand and her daughter Saskia on board the Viking boat. Chapter 40. Saskia lay on the deck. If an eagle swooped down now and picked her up for its supper, that would be fine with her. It would be better than this. Her dress was soaked through, her hands were raw and blistered from rowing, and her back ached so badly she wondered if she'd ever be able to get up again. She was green too. She'd asked Poxo to photograph her face, and when it sh he'd showed it to her, she'd screamed. Mater, on the other hand, was all fired up. She'd battled the storm and vanquished it. She was a warrior queen on a mission. A loud cheer came sounding across the water. She looked across the deck to see Mater bowing her head in regal style and waving a hand as if she was a Roman emperor. Who's that? Some of my subjects paying homage to their, from their quaint little inn. Saskia groaned. Mater was becoming despotic. The Junko has dropped anchor up ahead reported Beetlebot Alpha from his station at the stern. Mater clapped her hands together. Slow up, Captain, and make sure we keep a low profile. Beta, time for you to track them. Yes, Baron. Yes, Your Majesty, Beta. Now get that. Got that? Yes, Your Majesty. Beta scuttled up to the stern and jumped overboard. Saskia rolled onto her side and hauled herself up very slowly. She watched Beta beetling across the surface of the water with his paddle flipper legs. She wished she could do the same. But she wouldn't be heading towards the Junko. She'd be headed to that inn over there, having a long bath and going to sleep for a thousand years. Right, let's get the throne ready, shall we? said Mater, sliding back the main hatch and descending the ladder. Saskia limped across the deck. Don't you think we should leave it and do the ceremony down there? she said, not wanting to help. No, on deck. I need an on deck coronation, not a below deck one. Saskia looked at the captain, who shrugged at her from the wheel. Oh, all right then, let's get this over with. She stepped onto the ladder and headed back down below. The throne was so heavy that the two of them, plus Poxo, could barely move it. Come on, put some oomph into it, Saskia, said Mater, giving it a shove across the planked floor. It's got gold in it, Mater. We should have brought more people to help. More people would have meant slower speed. That Junko is super powered, and as it was, we could barely keep up. Come on, push! They got it to the hatch. Saskia tied the ropes underneath it while Mater and Poxo climbed back up on deck. She passed the ropes up to them. Push from the bottom, Saskia, while we pull up. One, two, three. The rope strain taut and the throne lifted off the floor. Saskia pushed up with what little strength she had left. She gritted her teeth, closed her eyes and thought how angry she was with Natalie. And with one last shove, the throne popped onto the deck with a thud. Crown, said Mater. Saskia growled, grabbed her carpet bag from behind, underneath one of the Viking robot seats and chucked it up through the hatch. Careful, darling, there are precious jewels in there, snapped Mater. Saskia couldn't have cared less. Chapter 41, The Cave. Nat and Henry took the double kayak, 
while Zixin paddled the single one. They were moving across the dark green water at a fast clip towards the mouth of Dermore Creek. Thick rope-like trunks and branches twisted up out of the water at the creek's edge. The whistling wind <whistles> on the river ceased. The water stilled to a glassy calm until they found themselves enveloped in an eerie silence. A white egret came flapping out of a cluster of low-hanging branches covered in plate-like green leaves and it made them all jump. Stop here, said Fizz. Nat dug her paddle into the water, bringing the kayak to an abrupt halt. She looked across at the water's edge. A thicket of bushes and trees hung low over a white stone bank. Here? Yes, this is the location your mum gave, said Fizz. Where's the cave? said Henry. It's bound to be hidden, said Nat, rowing towards the bank. She pulled up alongside an overhanging tree. Zixin parked his kayak right up against the bank itself. I'll climb out and check the bank above if you want to do the water bit. You'll be better at that than me, he said. Nat nodded and started using her paddle to shift veg vegetation out of the way. Smells like old socks, said Henry, wrinkling his nose. That's all this stuff rotting in the water, Nat said, breaking a dead branch off. The tangle of branches and vines was so thick she wished she'd brought a saw with her. They searched until Nat's arms were scratched and aching from pulling and weeding out the bank area. Vesperetta had helped by slithering into places that she couldn't reach, but apart from a few cracks and crannies, there was no sign of this cave. You know what this means, said Zixin, joining them again and pointing below the water's surface. Henry gulped. It looks dark and scary in there. I bet it's full of eels and water snip. Nat held up her hand. Stop. Don't say anything else about that. When's low tide? In three minutes, said Vesperetta. Nat took off her life jacket and pulled her goggles out of the pocket. Are you really going in? said Henry, frowning. Unless you have a better idea, yes. Zixon began to take off his life jacket. No, don't, said Nat. Stay here and look after Henry. I'll be fine with Fizz. I can't swim, exclaimed Fizz. She scooped up the little dragon. But you're waterproof and I need you to light the way. I'll hold on tight to you. I promise I won't let you go. Eyes on, please. Fizz activated his torch mode. Nat stood up, took a deep breath and dived in. The water was ice cold, even in her wetsuit. Worse still, it was dark and murky. Bits of leaves and branches hung in the water. It was like some primeval soup. She rocketed up to the surface for air. Anything? said Zixin. Not yet, it's a jungle. Dismal, said Fizz. She dived down again, and again, and again. I think you should get out and we'll get some scuba tanks, said Zixin when she surfaced. Once more, then I'll officially give up. She took the biggest breath. She could and dived down to where some old tree roots were growing out of the bank. They were thick and trunk-like. She swept Fizz's beam over to the biggest one, left to right. She stopped and focused the beam on a mossy square shape that stood out against the grey stone of the bank. She swam up to it, and brushed the moss away, revealing dark planked wood. She ran her fingers across the surface and she came upon a metal hangle, handle. She pulled, it didn't move. She clenched her hand into tiger claw, pulled back her arm, focused on the handle and punched through the water. Her clawed hand grasped the handle and she snatched it back. The handle gave way and the door opened. Nat's lungs felt as if she, they were going to burst. She pushed off to the surface. A door, she said between gulps of air. There's a door. She didn't wait for a reply. She just breathed in and dived down again. The doorway was just big enough to swim through. 
Fizz's beam arrowed into the thick, dark void ahead. Nat swam inside and pushed her way along a narrow stone tunnel. And just when she thought she'd have to turn back, it opened out and a faint pinprick of light was hitting the water above. She kicked with her feet up and up until she came bursting out onto the surface. Aya! she cried, sucking in the metallic, salty air. She lifted Fizz above the water and stuck him on top of her head while she trod water. They'd come out in a cave, lit by a thin shaft of light coming up through its roof. We're going to stop there today. And tomorrow we are going to find out what Nat discovers in the cave. Very exciting. So thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Stay well. Bye bye.